Hi, I'm Jennifer Gayro with Anna. Hi, I'm Anna and I'm here with Jennifer. We are in the lovely art department in the village of Foncouverte. I am going to introduce you to my lovely client who purchased with Leggett and myself a few years back, Curtis de Vera. Hi Curtis, how are you? Hi Anna, I'm fine. Thanks for the introduction. My name's Curtis and I'm here in the lovely village of Foncouvert, as Anna said. I've been fortunate enough to retire at a very young age, so I purchased a home in 2015 with Leggett and it was a wonderful experience. And now I'm getting to enjoy my retirement here in the south of France. So Curtis, tell us a little bit about yourself and your project. So as I said, I'm retired. I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area and have been traveling for quite some years, fortunate enough to have done a lot of it in my business. And through my travels, I was able to find lovely places to visit. And France has always intrigued me, um, mainly because when I was in school, my best friend's mother said, you have a choice of taking German, Spanish, or French. And my best friend was taking French, so that's what I decided to do. So um, I've been able to visit France, oh gosh, probably more than 40 times over the years, and fell in love with the life, the food, the people, uh, just kind of everything about the country was something that I really, really enjoyed. And so I looked for a place in the south of France. Uh, I started that project really in about 2012, 2013. Um, I got introduced to Anna via the internet. I had seen a place online and sent an email. She responded immediately, which was fantastic. I wanted a modern house with no construction, single story with a pool. And I ended up with a home that has eight bedrooms and needed some work, uh, three stories and the guest house. I was lucky. I got a two for one, as we say in the States, a buy one, get one free, so to speak. <laughs> um, so I have a lovely sheet attached to the home, which is uh, an income potential. And I've rented it out a few weeks uh, over the years. So Curtis, tell me why you chose Leggett International to as your agency. So you know, during the process, um, given the time and distance being nine hours behind France, I really relied on the internet. And what I found, number one, was the Leggett site was very easy for me, who is a non-tech person, to be able to manipulate to get the data that I needed. That was the first thing. The second thing was when I did make contact with multiple agents, the Leggett agent was the one that responded first and foremost in English, although I have somewhat of a command of the French language now, but they responded in English and I got a sense of comfortability, a sense of professionalism, and in looking at their website and looking at the amount of agents that they had in the area that I was looking at and the resources that they offered um, through the, the agent that I ultimately ended up with, which is Anna. Um, it just made me feel comfortable that I was in really great hands with somebody who knew the area, who actually had been born overseas, moved to the US, and then moved back to France. And so there was a real strong sense of understanding how an American works and what, where you will find your challenges. And she was able to give those up front and say, look, this is one thing that's gonna be a challenge for you, so here's some resources. You know, she was helping me be able to be comfortable in purchasing the home and where, again, some challenges would be in that area. So I felt absolutely like I was in very professional hands but also somebody who kind of cared too. Um, you know, they want to get to know you, and that was, was really important in buying a home, especially you know, 5,000 miles away, is I felt like I had somebody who was there representing my interests, and she got the time to know me and understand the things that I was looking for uh, when purchasing a home. So Curtis, what is it, one thing that changed your mind about buying something completely different than what you came to purchase here? And what made you decide to stay in this region, the Aude region? So I'll take the second part first. The Aude region reminded me of kind of the Napa Valley before it got developed. And since I grew up in a town, like I said, in the San Francisco Bay Area, you know, the rolling hills, the trees, the vineyards, I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more than that. Which was nice about the Ode was that it's, it's not as developed, um, say, as it is further north, you know, um, yet it's close enough 
to the ocean, to the beach. You can go skiing. Um, so you have kind of all the best of both worlds in that sense. There's great access to uh, airports, whether it be in Montpellier or in Toulouse. It's not nothing more than an hour and a half drive. The second part of that then is that you get a good value for money here in the Ode. Um, first time I saw the house, um, we went in and we saw the Jeet first. And the previous owner had completely remodeled the Jeet. Even though it's big, it's still homey. We then came into the house and thought, man, I could live in the Jeet instead of the house. <laughs> but um, no, the house, I think, you know, it has a feeling and a character to it. It has some of the original tile work that is unique to the area here. I think that what you were saying about coming to Odin being so comfortable as an American, because we are situated in such a place where me, myself, when I came 10 years ago as a parent, not as a real estate professional, um, there's that sense of comfort and an almost feeling like you're at home with the amenities and the accessibility to travel, to healthcare, to education, to culture. I mean, with Toulouse and Carcassonne and there's, and Montpellier is not far as well. And you have the beaches and you can travel internationally throughout Europe in no time and having, you know, skiing and then also the beach at the same time. And then you mix that with the culture and the, the local culture of the markets and the wine and the, wine. the charcuterie oh. and the cheese. I mean, you know, I personally can't pass up a good patisserie if I'm in a local market on a day. And that just, you know, having someone who also understands, I think, where you where you're coming from and what yes. makes you feel good about being in a place. And Ode really has an Occitanie has all of that very parallel feeling to home um, with the French flair though, because obviously you're in France. So I think that, you know, it's, it's really nice to, to live here and to settle. Anna helped, the agency helped me understand that you wanted this, but we think you, and we see it in your eyes that you fell in love with this. So let's make the deal happen for you. Um, that works out and, and it did. And um, I've been nothing but happy uh, since I arrived here and I've been able to make some great friends very quickly um, and still get to explore the region because every day is like an adventure, whether it's going to the, the grocery store, which is just five minutes away or going to a doctor's office Office or paying your taxes. It's, everything <laughs> is an adventure. And I think that I've been fortunate in that I had someone help me guide through the process. And uh, when she saw the way that I looked at it, I could tell in her eyes that, that she was telling me to make the right decision and that was to buy the house. So tell me, Curtis, what um, do you love the most about being in France? And then what are some you know, differences for you as being an American, maybe um, whether that's good or bad, challenging that you found? I think what, what I have come to really admire and love the most about France is, is their ability to enjoy the life, right? And um, as an example, when you sit down and eat, it's not just nourishment you just you're not sitting there and you know you don't do it in front of the tv you know and you just eat and that's it it's it's about the meal itself and and you know you have your wine with it you know you have to have your cheese with it i mean there's there's just i'm going to say requirements but which are important and the way that they enjoy that and then that bleeds out into how they enjoy their life right um you learn to not sweat the small stuff, and ultimately everything is the small stuff. I, like I said, I grew up in the Bay Area of San Francisco. I lived in there, I've lived in Los Angeles, I've lived in, in Switzerland, I've lived in Zurich, and so I've lived in big cities all my life. I purposely chose to slow down that life 
um, so that I could enjoy the fruits of my labor. I mean, that's, you know, again, another little cliche there, but, um, and this area gives me that opportunity to be able to do that, whether it's just stopping and having a coffee or, hey, I'll, I'll see you at two o'clock and if you get there at 2.15, it's no big deal. That is really ultimately, I think, what I am enjoying most. The, the quality of the healthcare is fantastic. Um, yes. It really is. And, and the doctors, the vast majority of them speak English, so never let the language be a barrier in getting things done. Yes, you're in France, so you should make every effort to do it. And one of the things I learned really on quickly is I'm always going to have an accent when I speak French. I don't care anymore. I don't give a darn about it because they know I'm not French and I'm not trying to pass off at that. But what I wanted to do was make the effort since I'm living in this country, stop comparing it to the US. I love the United States and I'm proud to be, you know, from California and, but I made the choice to live in France. So I want to acclimate myself to the, the lifestyle and the language here. And I've learned so many crazy new expressions. There's one saying, <laughs> it rolls my hand. I mean, it's like, okay, but, <laughs> but it really means like thumbs up. That's great, you know, or uh, bouge ton cool. Like the literal <laughs> translation, is move your yeah. mm, and it just translates so kind of funny I just found it so amusing but these are the great things that I've been able to learn to developing a network here you know now the next thing will be getting a driver's license here because you only get one year to be able to do that so um, you know taking the test in French will be a challenge and doing the actual are you driving. taking the test I'm gonna take the test and then I have to go to the school for 20 hours I think is what it is ultimately I, in and the driving. of course if you want, if you drive an automatic, you don't drive a manual, uh, there is a new license now where it is strictly for automatic cars. Um, and you can get that a lot easier than with a manual car. Yeah. But so you that know, is an option. Yeah. Part of the thing is, you know, to buy that de cheval and have yes. it as a, as, a, as, a, as a boite manual, as they say. Yes, there, the right? boite manuel. So, so you know, I mean, that's, that, that's part of but the But it's job. an option for Absolutely. those who just don't yeah. feel like learning. So if someone is hesitating, but is thinking of coming to France, as an American living here, what would you suggest? I think what immediately comes to mind, one of the things that I did was, is rent a place in the area that you want to be in. But don't do it in the perfect summer ideal conditions. Do it in the dead of winter when, you know, it gets dark a little bit earlier. Um, when the markets aren't as vibrant because it's the fall and winter vegetables and not, you know, the summer fruits. So take some time to explore the area and try and immerse yourself whether it be for a couple of weeks, you know, rent a, rent a, rent a jeet, you know, go on uh, one of the websites and find a place to stay, rent a car and drive around and see, because in some areas it may be a little bit more tourist driven. So a lot of those things are seasonal and dependent on that. Um, and then you can get a great feel and sense for what it's like. You gotta understand how it is. Just as a quick aside, the first time I went to the butcher shop, I didn't know how it worked. Do you abide by the piece, by the slice, by the weight, by the what, who knows? And all these different names for all these different pieces and cuts of meat. What I did was I went to two lovely grandmothers and in my best textbook French, asked them if they could help me. And I explained that I was an American, that I had moved to this village and I didn't know how it works at the butcher shop. That's the kind of thing that you need to explore to see if you can survive. These, these two grandmothers, they were so sweet. They said, oh, he's so cute and his French is so proper. And that accent is so magnificent. And I was like, oh my God, I, I don't speak very well. But th the fact that, that they were engaging with me, that made me want to stay more and to, to figure out how things work. Do you weigh your veg before you take it up to the, to the counter? So don't let you know, healthcare become an issue for you. Don't let the movement of money become an issue for you. Don't let the driving become an issue for you. There's roundabouts, so get used to how to driving on that, you know, um, and just make the most of, of, of where you can see what those, those challenges could be. Not having kids, you know, getting into the school system, um, you gotta figure out how that works. But, you know, there are so many parents around that and people that will help you walk through what that system is like. The French, they can be very um, direct 
And as an American, I think you, you could find that a little bit, not offensive, but like um, pushy. They mean nothing about it. They're just being, they're just answering the question that you ask them. And don't ever get aggressive back too, because you will get the, which means you've been closed down and nothing's going to happen. So if you want your driver's license or you want that appointment or you want, you know, the water, you know, man to do something for you, just remember that, you know, a, a kind word, a thank you, a please goes a long, long way. Yes, it really does. Well, thank you so much for the time. Thank you for all the information. And most of all, thank you for losing, for using Leggett. So, Anna, just, hey, thanks for, for coming to visit. I think enough spoken here. C'est parti. Time for a little apéro, and we'll head off to the kitchen. Put together a little uh, oh, this is apéro great. for us. Some of the local charcuterie that we have here. Just some great little olives, mm. cornichon. And is this from the Pyrenees is with the that, espalette, yeah, the cheese? Yeah, so it's a little spicy, mm. but not super spicy. And this is a Pyrenees de Noir de Montagne. De, Noir de Montagne, yeah. Amantal, Amantal, uh, chevre, chevre, goat cheese. Mm. Ooh, this is yeah. so good. You know, I can't to, wait to dig in. To nosh on, to Thank you, Curtis. Right? This is so kind. And you can't miss your saucisson. Mm -hmm. That's life. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You have to have that. <laughs> this yeah. is it great. Be a meal without it, Fantastic. right? Fantastic. You know?